So that's a fair amount of flushing. Um, and you can see that there's a pretty big um, amount of dead space in there. So there's a few reasons why a wet to dry is a, a good idea in this case. Um, one, like I said before, is giving the gauze some time to help us with our debridement um, because even as I'm, you know, trying to dry this out now, I can see that there's really dark uh, necrotic tissue in there that there's just no way that feasibly I'm going to be able to debride all that out manually. Um, it also is a good idea because not in this case particularly, but sometimes these dogs come in with a large purple or um, even kind of black spot where the abscess is trying to rupture out and that tissue ends up um, dying off. So if for say this dog did have a big spot here, we had lanced through that spot, we would then have to debride all that tissue back to where the healthy tissue would be leaving a really big hole. Um, and again, a lot of smaller abscesses, what we deal with in cats or smaller dogs um, are not as extensive and the owners can manage those at home with just um, warm compressing and you know draining cleaning up the drainage on their own but this is quite extensive for an owner to have to manage and so we really want to protect this tissue um, and and help it heal um, this owner was made aware of the need for follow-up which can be pretty intensive over the first week to two weeks um, because it can be daily bandage changes um, but it's probably the best option for this dog. If we were to try to close this, it would be very likely that it would either get reinfected or form a large seroma. So um, what we will do is we'll actually take some of the fur back a little bit here um, and then also on the top and that will give us a large space to put sutures in around it to secure our gauze padding. Okay, so I'm gonna re-prep this. Um, some of you may have seen the dog Reggie that had a very similar location to his abscess where we packed it with roll gauze and then made a ventral incision hole um, to pull that roll gauze out every day. And that was nice because again, it, it helps to bride um, and it's that dog, good boy, tolerated that. Um, procedure every day so instead of having to do a massive bandage change every day um, we were able to just do that kind of quicker procedure um, my hope is that this dog may not need as intensive bandage changes as Reggie and so maybe we can uh, kind of avoid th that more intricate process and just stick with our um, kind of basic wet to dry tie over so the eye, there's a lot of kind of edema around the eye, which is all secondary from the inflammation back here where the abscess is. I don't think that this eye is at all affected and I don't feel like I have to worry too much about it. This bandage is gonna be, it's in a really irritating location again, so that's another reason why we do a tie over is that we can secure it in place instead of having to mess with trying to get a head wrap on. Um, so it, it is still irritating to the patient, but maybe not as much so as, um, a head bandage and so um, in this case you know we are very close to the eye but I don't think that you know we're in danger of having any effect on it and I think that the swelling around the eye will go down once this abscess has been drained. So there's still a fair amount of fluid in here. Um, I would like to clean some of that out just a bit however a wet to dry is just that we are putting um, some wet gauze in there so we don't need it to be completely cleaned up. Um, I'm going to try to use a lap sponge, um, one because I like that material a little bit better. Um, depending on the 4x4s you have, it may shed a little bit less, and two because it's feasible that we could lose a piece of gauze into this um, cave. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we have wetted, yeah, we've wetted a lap sponge um, with some saline and we'll bring it out so it's damp. And then I like to leave the little blue tags out and you can just kind of start packing that in there. We're 
certainly not going to get this whole thing in there, but we can get a fair amount and then flatten that over top. So that's our wet part of this process. And then I can just put a regularly folded lap pad over that as kind of our dry part. And then what we'll do is secure this with some stay sutures around it and then tie it into place. Okay, so we're gonna put some tacking sutures. You can do this before you pack the wound, but sometimes I find it helpful to kind of know where they're gonna go. And these are just placed into the skin. as tacking loops. So you want to leave a big enough loop to get some umbilical tape through there. And you want to use a non-absorbable suture for this um, because for the dogs that are getting bandage changes over a period of sometimes weeks, if you use an absorbable suture, it will start to absorb and then you have to replace your sutures. But you'll see when we do the tying of the umbilical tape, you kind of want to make sure that they're equally spaced around and give you some options for running the tape through there. So sometimes I try to get it into like a star pattern. Um, usually five or six is sufficient. So now that we have our stay sutures placed, I do want to cover this with something both for um, cosmetic appearance and also to protect it a little bit. And as I'm touching this top lap sponge, I'm noticing that it's already a little bit wet, which is to be expected, but because I have a pack open, I'm just going to go ahead and replace this top pad before we suture this in place so it's as dry as possible. I anticipate this bandage will need to be changed tomorrow and probably daily for the first um, three to five days. I like to cover this with some type of impermeable or waterproof substance and drape material works really nice. All right, so that looks like it'll be pretty nice. You can kind of tuck in the edges. It's like a little package right on the side of the face. I've pre-cut my umbilical tape. And so again, there's not a hard and fast rule of how to do this. You're kind of just wrapping a package and trying to make it as secure as possible. And like I said, a star and a pattern is a good place to start. And you can absolutely go through more than one, uh, a loop more than once. Um, you want it to have a fair amount of tension on there, but not so much that you're pulling too hard on the skin. That's just a bit of a judgment. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, 
I'm just checking my edges, making sure that I feel like it's pretty secured. As I mentioned, I don't have a stay suture on the back end here. Um, and that's because I wanted to avoid irritating her ear. You know, her ear is pretty close, but it's still gonna be behind this wrap. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And then you can just tie this off in a double knot here. And then cut your ends. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. It feels pretty secure. Um, again, you know, this is a little irritating to them. Um, she may have the desire to want to shake her head with how close her ear is here. Uh, we will put an e-collar on her and um, this is short term. So we just need her to tolerate it for um, until we feel like it's healing appropriately. There are, um, there is a chance that after several bandage changes that we'll feel pretty good about how it looks and may even do a primary closure or a, a delayed secondary closure. Um, but it's just a, a wait and see game and the wound will tell us what it needs.